Uh, good evening. This is Dr. Chandrasekharan. Uh, I'm the moderator for today's IAE program. And today's speaker is a distinguished uh, gentleman, Dr. Uh, Professor V. Amudan, who's a retired head of the Department of Cardiology, Madurai Medical College. And all of you know him quite well because he's been a past president of Indian Academy of Echocardiography. Cardiography. Among his various achievements, one of the nicest things is he's done a manual of 3D echocardiography book published in 2012 and also edited a textbook of echocardiography in IAE. So all of you know him quite well. I don't think that I can add anything uh, that you don't know. In fact, probably reading his uh, bibliography, I learned more about him than uh, all of you know before. Anyway, I think IAE has been doing a great job during this lockdown period, having these regular seminars, webinars, through which we are able to exchange our ideas and also share some of the thoughts and keeps us occupied with the academic activity. And it's been great for the last one and a half years. And today, Dr. Amazon is going to give us an um, overview of tips and tricks in acquiring 3D image, how it's going to be useful in clinical echocardiography. And I think I would urge all the audience to post their questions in the chat box as we go along so that at the end, we'll be, I'll be able to read it and Dr. Amudan will be able to uh, give his insight. And if there are any deeper questions which are there, I may ask, I'm gonna get the I'm gonna answer from one of the GE or which we, which if I don't answer that, don't know, Dr. Amudan doesn't know, we might get some help from other people to chime in through the chat box. Anyway, over to you, Dr. Amudan. It's a great pleasure, and thank you very much for doing this. And we're all interested in learning some of the uh, final tricks and uh, things which you have learned over the last decade. Over to you, Dr. Amudan. Thank you, sir, for the nice introduction. Uh, this uh, concept of webinar was introduced by uh, none other than father of echocardiography in India, uh, Dr. Parashar. Dr. Parashar has, uh, is a great visionary who created this Indian Academy of Echocardiography. And uh, all the, over the years, the regular uh, conferences and the regular uh, journal of Interna Indian Academy of Echocardiography. And then we came out with a textbook of echocardiography uh, by Indian Academy of Echocardiography in 2018. And now, uh, we are having this seminar. This is going to be an ongoing job and every month we'll be having these uh, webinars. Now, uh, we are going to have a small talk on this essential tips on 3D echocardiography, acquisition and post-processing. I have got a great passion for the 3D echocardiography and uh, the synopsis of today's talks will have uh, basics, acquisition and uh, post-processing of cardiac chambers. I will mainly concentrate on cardiac chambers because it is going to be your day-to-day uh, -day routine, uh, mainly left ventricle, right ventricle, and left atria. And the valves, they are most important valves than the heart, mitral valve, tricuspid valve, right valve, and pulmonary valve. And then we will see uh, into the atrial septum and uh, current clinical ap applications. So, so let us have some basics. Uh, Two-dimensional echocardiography is a tomographic technique which provides flat views of the heart and great vessels. You can see here, this is the two-dimensional echocardiography, which has the thickness is fixed and related to the piezoelectric element in the vertical dimension. Now, compare this to 3D. 3D is based on real-time volumetric imaging that allows acquisition of pyramidal data set. This is a pyramidal data set that is uh, 3D. And this pyramidal data set, this is the azimuthal plane, which you see in 2D. And this is the axial plane, which you see in the y-axis of the 2D. What you don't see in 2D is this elevation plane, which is called as the z-axis. So these three dimensions lead to the three-dimensional echocardiography. Now, Sometimes we call this as 4D echo. What is this? 4D echo is real-time 3D. 
So time added to these dimension, that's called as 4D echo. Now all these things are possible uh, only by the uh, advancements in the transducer technology, which has led to this uh, uh, technique, technical advantage. Now, I will show you some of the techniques. So this is a 2D image. Now in uh, 3D, in biplane, you can select this and then go for the simultaneously opposite view, which is called as orthogonally opposite view. And then the 3D, the real uh, full volume of the 3D, which you can see. So now we will go to the acquisition modalities uh, first. So always, uh, when you think of 3D, don't go to 3D immediately. Now, first thing you have to achieve is start with a biplane or triplane view. This biplane is called as X-plane uh, by Philips. So some of the uh, vendors have their own uh, wordings, which you must remember uh, to operate their machine. So this is the biplane technique. The advantage of this biplane is this uh, cursor can be moved anywhere in this. So if you are going to place it over the interventricular septum and the interatrial septum, it will give orthogonally opposite on that side. If you are going to put it over the iota, then you will see the iota in this. So you can move this uh, cursor so that you have the orthogonally opposite cut in 90 degrees over here. So the uh, advantage is simultaneous adjustable biplane 2D and color, and it is excellent for anatomy, measurements, and use of the jets. Now, uh, this uh, uh, machine has a triplane view. Triplane view, here you have long axis, the apical four chamber, apical two chamber. So 60 degrees apart. And uh, you can have all the uh, walls, regional walls can be seen in this. So before switching on to your uh, full volume, check in this whether you are able to see all the walls, this. And it is especially useful in patients who are having atrial fibrillation to select the particular beat. Now, 3D acquisition modalities, before going to the regular full volume, you can go to live 3D, which is a term by Philips, and G, you have this as bird's eye view. So this is how this is called as a bird's eye view. So it is only 30 degrees here. 30 degrees here, it may be uh, 90 degrees or 220 degrees, as you see in 2D, uh, plus this 30 degrees in the elevation plane. Now, this is the bird's eye view or the uh, live 3D. Uh, you can see here something fantastic here. I don't know whether you can guess, you can just uh, uh, say your answer in the chat box before we go to the full volume and see this, what is this. So it's a 3D bed with adjustable size, shape, position, and process volume rates and position structure of the interest in the middle uh, to fourth year. It's excellent for IT bell and uh, metal bell. So you must remember this. So for metal bell, you have to go for this. So this is uh, 3D acquisition modalities, full volume. This is full volume, you can see here. So now you switch down in the long axis plane, full volume. Now you see here, what is this? So this is a patient with RSOV who has undergone intervention, interventional closure. The uh, device was placed in the non-coronary cusp, which you can see here, which was impinging on the ID valve which led to severe aortic regurgitation in this patient there. So full volume gives you everything. So this is the 2D picture and simultaneously orthogonally opposite short axis. And what you see in 3D is what you don't see in 2D. So always 3D dimension is better than. So before going for, uh, actually going for the volumetric analysis of the left ventricle, you have to place this in the tomographic slice. So select these 12 tomographic slices so that and the cut can be made from the apex to the base so that all the regions of interest are seen. So this is the first a logical step which you have and then you switch on the full volume. So straight away don't go for full volume and uh, this is the steps which you have to follow. So the 3D large volume pyramid is seen here. Extensive post-acquisition cropping and quantifications are needed to see this. 
and it is prone to stitch artifacts, including cropping. And it, so that is the now another fantastic view which you have uh, with uh, 3D is a zoom view. So what is zoom? See a small portion or the acquisition box, the zoom box can be placed, and that particular area can be zoomed. So when you want to acquire the images of uh, the valves, these are the best views. So when you want to see the ID bell, mitral bell, so this is the best view to go for, and this is the called as 3D zoom. It's a, a truncated 3D pyramid with adjustable size and position. The box can be adjusted, and here you will have the 3D. And uh, slow volume rates, and excellent for ID bells and uh, uh, for ASD. I will show you in the end how do you do that. Normal cardiac anatomical examination starts with uh, the transducer. The 3, 3D transducer are uh, not larger than this uh, 2D transducer. In the initial days, we used to have a big 3D transducer. Now you see this is uh, from Philips uh, X51, and this is uh, from uh, uh, G. It's a fantastically small transducer which you can use and choose. And uh, the same procedure. So while you are going for 3D, I usually consider as an extension of your examination. I don't know that about others. I do regular uh, 2D, then a mode or any cut I do, then color for Doppler and the spectral Doppler analysis. And then finally I go to the 2D, I mean 3D mode. The X, the two uh, biplane view, then the uh, uh, bird's eye view and then go for this full volume. So it is regular 4D Pro and you can see here the common echocardiographic techniques which are used for this are rotation, tilting, angling and plane of scan. So all these things can be adjusted so that you get the uh, 3D images. The 3D transducer positions are the same, the parasternal position, ethical position. These are the two positions which we use very commonly. And in uh, pediatric age group, we can go for the subclassional approach and uh, suprasternal approach. So uh, for adults, it's uh, primarily parasternal and the only ethical ap approach which we have. And this is the uh, level of cut, long axis, short axis, and uh, ethical approaches. So these are the things. Now, these are the strengths and limitations of the uh, uh, 2D. I mean, 3D modes. So this is a live view where uh, high volume rate and real time. The limitations, which you have to say, is small sector volume, cost frame rate. This is a full volume, stitch artifacts. So when you are going to mix two or three or four beads or six beads, you will have stitch artifacts. And because cropping in this. Zoom mode is excellent for T. When you do 3D T, yeah, zoom mode is the best view. And explain it is always you start with the biplane view and then uh, you can uh, cut in the particular area. And the 3D color, I will show you in the end uh, as we uh, go on. So, uh, stitch artifact is a problem here also. So, the advantages and uh, the adv main advantages of the 3D is end phase view, which you don't see in other view, another 2D examinations. And the realistic anatomic images of the DT part are similar. And uh, the main thing is it avoids foreshortened view of volumetric quantification. And similarly, 3D uh, the, uh, the RV function is one of the uh, very excellent techniques because RV has uh, inlet, body, and outlet portions, which cannot be covered in a single 2D image. So 3D RV EF is great. And uh, so the 3D techniques avoid geometric assumption. And uh, the cardiac chamber geometry and function can be obtained from a single 3D data set. So these are the views and advantages of uh, 3D examination. Now we will go one by one. This is a LV systolic function assessment. Mainly we uh, rely on left ventricular ejection fraction and the global longitudinal strain, GLS. So these two techniques can be easily undertaken when you, you acquire the image with uh, 3D Pro. You can see here, unless you know the depth, don't fall into this, don't die. 
So similarly, unless you don't have a gap on the third dimension, your uh, apex, true apex may not be located and there may be foreshortening error. And when there is a LV aneurysm, it may not be well represented. So the geometric dependence is avoided by 3D uh, imaging techniques. And uh, non-EF techniques like a GLS calculation is much more easier with uh, so let us go into the uh, 3D ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is the single most uh, requirement by any physician or surgeon. And we give excellent reporting, which is comparable to CMR when you do 3D EF. So I really do 3D EF. Now for doing a 3D EF or ejection fraction calculation, select the LV focused ethical four chamber view. So we usually have the uh, tradition of placing the interventricular septum in the center of this and being both RV and LV. But for selecting the LV ejection fraction by 3D techniques, always select the LV focused ethical four chamber plane. And uh, second step is uh, go into the 12 tomographic slides and adjust the tips apex and base, so that you see all the regions are included in this. And uh, then you have to mark two points only for end diastolic volume, uh, just apply a point over the coaptation point, and second point is over the LV apex. And then you can adjust. The machine usually has artificial intelligence, it traces the borders excellently, and you can adjust it as it is word. And similarly, for n you just place two points and then the machine does the job. And you have the results. See your ejection fraction, endosolic volume, ejection fraction, all are calculated and shown displayed with the graph. So this is very, very simple with uh, G. And uh, the uh, this is the Philips system, uh, which I uh, usually the initial base. Uh, you can see here, this is the former technique where you can calculate the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume. And they recently, uh, they have uh, uh, the contact is occurred by Philips and they have this excellent tool of what model, which uh, invokes the power of the artificial intelligence into the calculation of projection fraction. And once you select this, automatically you have these reports. So, uh, calculation of ejection fraction, correct ejection fraction is very, very important. Never ever do ejection fraction calculation from a mode, single plane. You don't have 3D uh, technology in your equipment. At least use the uh, Simpson formula. Never use a mode, especially in patients with heart failure, patients who have very aneurysms and other uh, problems. And uh, when you do 3D, uh, the results are excellent. When you and you can adjust the dosage of the anti failure treatments, objective evidence is there. Now, uh, when you do ejection fraction, the advantage of uh, 3D technique gives you the power of 3D strain when you do this. So, it is a continuation of the same process. The strain echocardiography performed by using speckle tricking technique can identify subclinical and left ventricular dysfunction before left ventricular ejection fraction declines. So GLS, it is the first uh, denominator which uh, decreases before ejection fraction falls. And the strain echocardiography is a powerful predictor of cardiac mortality and morbidity for numerous cardiac conditions. So we'll go through that. What is myocardial strain? It is a, diamondless, a dimensionless index of change in length. So the length, the initial length, the length, uh, which is uh, short, after the shortening, divided by the initial. So it is almost like Starling's law. And what you see here is the in, uh, intima, there you have the longitudinal fibers. And uh, over the media, you have the circumferential fibers, and here you have the oblique fibers. So the, there is a com complex combination of deformation to produce ejection. So base apex uh, shortening, and uh, circumferential shortening, axial twist, and wall thickness and ejection. So all these things result in this. So this is the longitudinal shortening which is seen here. 
So from the apex, your base, it is contracting. And this is the circumferential area, which is short X. And uh, this is the radial short. So all these things combine. And from the apex to base, there is also a twist. The base uh, moves in the clockwise direction. The apex moves in the counterclockwise direction. And you have the uh, advantage of computerization factor. 2D strain requires acquisition of multiple 2D images, three short axis views and three ethical views. And uh, whereas 3D technique is simply a continuation of your rejection fraction calculation, you can see here. And the advantages are also seen here. Only ethical six bit full volume is occurred, that's all. In the temporal resolution of 34 to 50 volumes per second. And you can have the area strain is calculated simultaneously. And the bullseye map is dynamic. And global strain calculation is simultaneous in all segments, whereas it is not simultaneous in, in use to be. A radial strain is calculated from area strain. And the main advantage, major advantage is there is no out of plane motion spittles. So as you see, when the ventricle contracts, if you are at 2D probe, may not be capturing all the areas. So the uh, speckle may be moving here and there. So the out of plane motion will not be there in 3D strain, whereas it will be there in 2D. And the definition of end system is the time of minimal volume, whereas in 2D it is a time of aortic valve closure. And the major advantage is uh, evaluation of the heart failure patient with the preserved ejection fraction. Ejection fraction normal, whereas uh, GCS is normal or elevated, whereas GLS is reduced. So this advantage you have here. This is what I was telling you. This is a 3D strain where the cube aspect is motion of the cube is traced, whereas a dot is traced in 2D strain. So this is a cube which is traced. So in that area you can calculate the circumferential, longitudinal, and radial strain, all are combinated. And uh, these are the normal values. In, uh, and, uh, there are large uh, studies which have, uh, which have come out with uh, the calculation of the GLS, GCS, GRS, and uh, torsion in patients. Uh, these uh, multicenter studies are available. And the global longitudinal uh, strain, GLS, normal range is minus 18 to minus 20. Global circumferential strain is minus 20 to minus 22. And GRS is uh, more than plus 40. This comes in plus 40. And the torsion rate is uh, 7 degrees, 7 plus or minus 1 degree. So how do you go and calculate uh, 3D GLS? Step one is acquire the multi-gated six bit that is six bit images from the left ventricular apex with ecg gating the main thing is whenever you do the 3d you must have ecg gating so without placing the ecg leads don't go for 3d examination that is the first step and then acquire multi-gated images from the left ventricular apex with the ecg gating at a frame rate of more than 40 per second so that's the most important thing and then here Initially, you do the uh, metacardial border and ejection fraction calculation. Then you go for the mass estimation, and then you come for the uh, region of interest for 3D strain. You just place the area of interest in the L in, in outer wall of the apex, I mean, the left ventricle. The left ventricular epicardium has to be placed more correctly, and the region of interest has to be placed. And then the 3D speckle uh, tracking is done, and the results are displayed as strain curves. This is, these are the strain curves and bullseye plot. So, this is the bullseye plot which you see. You see uh, 2D uh, strain as a plot, I mean, non dynamic, whereas this is a dynamic uh, bullseye plot. And you have all the uh, requirements here, and then you simultaneously have. This uh, twist function of the uh, also is displayed here. So this is the base, and this is the apex. You can very well see the base contracts uh, clockwise manner. You can see here, 
and the apex contracts in account of this matter. So this is the example from the uh, normal patient, which you can see here. This is the longitudinal strain, circumferential strain, area strain, radial strain, and fist degrees are displayed. And the curves are also displayed. Now, if you want to freeze it in the end system, and you can see the uh, freeze this dynamic because uh, some of the uh, beginners I and mean, some of the uh, routine 2D echocardiographers won't follow the dynamics. Here you uh, have the display of this. Uh, you can freeze it in the end system. This is the end system. You can freeze it and record the uh, global strain, global longitudinal strain. This is the global circumferential strain, global area strain, area strain, and the twist degrees can be displayed here. Now, there was a comment when uh, we offer uh, for multiple vendors, some may feel that 3D strain is available with only GE or something like that. Now you can see it is available with the GE, it is available with the Tomtech. This is a Tomtech software, and it is also available with the Canon software. So, three uh, leading vendors. The town tech is uh, other than, nothing other than uh, this. They have to do this. So it is available. The 3D strain techniques are available across the spectrum of the vendors. Uh, G, who has been playing this from the initial days, town tech and Canna. And uh, the comparison. So the biggest uh, critic of this strain function was that uh, these vendors don't agree with each, uh, each other. G doesn't under, uh, agree with the Tomtech and uh, doesn't agree with the Toshiba. So there was a big uh, meeting of these, all these things with the effort of uh, American Society of Echocardiography and European uh, Association of uh, Cardiovascular Imaging. And they brought all these leading vendors in their compliance. And you can see here the uh, results of this uh, uh, 3D strain derived from G. This is uh, GLS. This is GCS and GRS. So we have a very good agreement. So these things are achieved. And this is the rotation function, which you can see here. When, the GA, when there is a fall in uh, GLS, it has to be compensated by increasing circumferential contraction. So they see GCS increases. So this results in patients with heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction where the GCS may be increased, uh, maybe normal initial days, and then it begins to fall. Whereas the ejection fraction, I mean, GLS falls earlier. So you can have heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction or with the uh, reduced ejection fraction. And accordingly, you have the uh, different types of GLS, GCS, and GL, GRS values. So, this is the rotation. This is the rotation of seven degrees in the normal heart in dilated cardiomyopathy. It is plus. This rotation is plus, and that is a bad prognosis. So, now I will show you some of the recordings from some of the cases. So, that case based uh, approach will be very good for you. And you can see here this is a case of uh, uh, heart failure with the preserved ejection fraction. Patient came with the heart failure symptoms. And uh, 2D examination done elsewhere revealed a normal ejection fraction. So the physician was perplexed because he was seeing an x ray of a heart failure patient with the clear symptoms. And uh, his echocardiography uh, report was giving an ejection fraction of normal ejection fraction. So, what do you do? You go for 3D analysis. So, the another important thing is in these patients, if you have only 2D technique, do this E the E prime or uh, e, e prime velocity from medial less than seven, from lateral less than 10, or E the E prime uh, more than 15. And then tear jet more than 3.8 uh, I mean meters per second. And the LA volume index more than 2.8, that uh, diastolic function, the more than 50% of these uh, four parameters should be there. So when you have an ejection fraction, please calculate all these things. When you have only 2D machine, it's very, very important. Otherwise, the physician, referring physician will say that there is an awfully uh, uh, remarkable heart failure. Your echocardiographic report says uh, normal heart. 
So what is the matter? So in these patients, you can do the uh, 3D examination where GLS, see, there is a marked reduction of GLS and uh, GCS still stays in command, almost uh, only borderly reduced around 14 and the area strain is all, uh, again borderly reduced. You can see that. So this difference can be achieved. You can see here, this is the uh, GLS minus four, GGS minus 13. So this calculation in one go, you can do, see one go, that is a typical six bit acquisition. That's all it's required, you do everything. So this is a heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction. Now I'll show you a case of heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. This is a patient with alcoholic cardiomyopathy. You can see here, this is a 3D examination, and this is the ejection fraction calculation from 3D. I, and it shows that uh, grossly reduced ejection fraction of uh, 23%. And then you have the uh, various parameters. So ejection fraction 23%, GLS is only minus one, GGS minus two. So, and the twist is gone. This function should be around seven degrees, it is only five. So that gives you added advantage. of this uh, technology. Now we will go to the another case. So this is one, can you say the diagnosis in this case? See this um, markedly thickened myocardium, the sparkling texture, that's very, very important, sparkling texture. Uh, I think most of you would understand what I mean. And uh, you can do the 3D uh, calculation, ejection fraction. This patient, look at the renal function also, that there is a CKD and CD. And you can see here, the 3D techniques. There is severely reduced longitudinal function with the cherry on top appearance and uh, apical function. So this uh, cherry on top appearance with the preserved. Our point is being stuck. <laughs> this is one of the uh, glitches of the. Uh, I'm sorry for this because the file size is very large, I go into these uh, problems. So sparkling texture on echo, and you can see here, this is the cherry on top appearance, preserved radial and the apical function. The most important thing is the radial strain, you see GRS, almost preserved, and the twist, the apical function is preserved. At one glance, you see that. So if you want to freeze it in the NC study, you can freeze in the NC study, and you can see that cherry on top appearance. And uh, amyloidosis can be treated. Uh, there are uh, very many approaches, the familial and uh, so stem cell uh, transplantation is available. So the diagnosis is very positive. Another important area is the CRT. So remember, we used to rely on Doppler uh, techniques and the M node techniques of uh, flash, septal flash. Now, what you have is in the echocardiography, 3D echocardiography is activation mapping in normal subjects. Uh, this can be done. Propagation of the images in the normal subjects by activation of the images in the 3D spectrum. The upper panel shows the propagation viewed from the left ventricle, septal side. And this is from the left, I mean, free wall side. So this is in a patient with uh, LBD. And this is the bullseye plot. 
where the activation starts and where it ends. So this is helpful while doing this uh, lead placement in CRT by echofluorofusion technique where it will place the lead. So guidance is available for this. And uh, this is the uh, patient with the MBD. They have, uh, this is the asymptomatic patient. They have a very borderline injection fraction of 29%. And this, this is a typical LBB uh, activation. You can see here, uh, characteristically LBB opposing the wall motion is present, indicating typical LB activation, including early terminated shortening in the septal valve, skin in the septal valve. This is a blue arrow and with the early stretch in the lateral wall. So all these things are possible. And this is the uh, 3D strain from the same patient. We are reduced to this patient. So this is a case of uh, inferior wall infarction. You can see here, this uh, SA elevation inferior segment and uh, we also, and the infarction is also there. We, there is a frequency of the inferior uh, septum and we the prime is uh, 12, the section fraction is 46. This is the 3D tomographic view. And then you go for the 3D ejection fraction. This is a long GLS is minus 11. And uh, this is the GCS minus 9. The AAS uh, minus 17, the twist is also reduced. And uh, this is the LA strain. I will come to that later, a little bit later. The LA volume is possible. LA volume is uh, 39 and 1. And uh, this is a uh, angiogram showing the mid uh, RCA lesion and uh, successful stenting and uh, the mitogenization increases in this patient. Initially, it was only uh, tickling uh, mitogenization, it has gone to grade 2. So, 3D technique, you can uh, calculate the RPC area, that is anatomic regurgitant RPC area. And then uh, go for this. This is after the successful angioplasty, the MRI has increased. This is the uh, acquisition, 3D acquisition of the magnification. And uh, E by A prime has also increased to 15. This is the LA strain. LA volume has also increased. So this patient required uh, uh, addition of uh, using in the lab purpose. So what are the advantages here is that uh, there are large number of studies, small studies, of course there are number is small. The 3D global strains are associated with this and uh, 3D GLS was the strongest predictor of cardiovascular mortality in many of the studies. So now we move on to the RV volume, RV ejection fraction and RV strain. Now, uh, this is a schematic illustration of the RE. See here, this is the RA, this is the inlet portion, main body, and then outlet portion. So when you use 2D, the single 2D probe, you, can, you cannot uh, have all these things. So you have, go for the 3D acquisition. So 3D images are acquired from the RV focused ethical core chamber. So initially for LV, we are using LV focused ethical core chamber. For RV, we are using RV focused ethical core chamber with a frame rate of more than 35 per second. That is very, very important. Okay. Now there are various steps. Step one is align the views. You have to align the views in all the three views. Ethical uh, core chamber. So orthogonally opposite. And then this is a short axis uh, view, which you can see here. The image is aligned over all these things uh, from a population point. At the basal RV level, mid RV level, two lines are placed. See, this is a basal RV level, this is mid RV level. And also in the coronal section, this plane has to be aligned, see, this line. So these are the requirements first. Then you mark some of the landmark points. This is a tricuspid P ball, tricuspid septum, or the apex. You can see here. Three points are marked here. And similarly, RV LV, the septal junction, 
of the RV and the LE is the anterior point, this posterior point has been marked. And similarly, the RV free wall, the largest diameter should be marked, the largest point. So these are the points which have to be marked. And then you have the uh, software which tells you, it gives you the picture of the uh, RV, 3D picture of the RV. RV ejection fraction is there. Anything less than 45 seems to be abnormal. 3D derived ejection fraction less than 45 is indicating of RV dissolution. So these are the steps involved in doing this or in strain calculation, which you can do that. And then there are uh, uh, 3D RV strain patterns which are available now. These are all in the research uh, laboratories. Now the publications have been made in uh, leading journals and they are uh, found in uh, uh, research labs, 3D strain. This is uh, LA volume. Then we'll go to the LA volume. LA volume, you have to, the advantage when you do the 3D is uh, calculation of the LA volume, volume as well as LA strain in one go. So that is the advantage. And uh, this is the LA volume, this is the LA strain, LA strain which it has here. The most important thing is uh, LA reservoir strain, which can be seen here. LA reservoir strain, this is always a positive value. This is the uh, conduit strain is a negative value, then contraction strain. All these three strains can be recorded at a single point. What is important is the reservoir strain. You forget about the conduit strain and the contraction strain. The only important thing is the RV reservoir strain. So all these things can be calculated. The first step in uh, calculating the LA volume is uh, you acquire an image which is LA focused image. See, this LV focused image, this is LA focused image. And you have to align all the three views. This is the four chamber, two chamber, and three chamber, all the three views. And optimize the temporal resolution, then set landmarks, only one landmark. First, you have to identify the mitral valve population point and you have to place the point. This is a four chamber, this is a two chamber, this is the uh, long axis plane. You have to place the metal valve population point correctly. And then these borders are displayed. You have to adjust the end diastolic point. This is, these points can be adjusted. This is the end diastolic point, the end systolic point, and the pre atrial contraction point. These three points have to be identified and you have to carefully mark the borders. So these borders have to be marked and then you go for this. Now you have the LA volume, this is the maximal LA, LA max, that is 58 ml. And then the emptying fraction can be displayed. This is the LA strain, which is displayed simultaneously. This is the LA strain, which is possible. The added advantage of LA strain and LA volume is that uh, LA, normally LA, LA strain is more than 35. When you have a yearly failure, heart failure, it is around 24 to 35, then it is, goes on reducing. So these can be illustrated here. This is a normal man. LA strain is uh, more than 40. And in patients with a delayed relaxation, reservoir strain is uh, around 30. Very so rule of uh, 10 is very easy. More than 40 normal. In 30, it is uh, usually associated with delayed uh, relaxation. And uh, this is uh, pseudo normal, where you, it is around 20. You can see here. And uh, in patients with uh, restrictive pattern, grade 3 diastolic dysfunction, this is fine is around 10%. You can see here. So these are all uh, given by multiple reading authors. Former slides were from Marvin. This is uh, from Lara Lang, Robert, Robert Lang. And uh, this is a simple rule of thumb. So, normal more than 40, grade 1 more than 30, and grade 2 20, grade 3 is around 10. Simple, simple figures, remember. And that helps you. Now, again, I'll show you LV function analysis in a patient with hypertrophic cardiac. You see that. 
the septal hypertrophy and the apical hypertrophy is more than the uh, hypertrophy base of the posterior bone. So left ventricular strain, the 3D strain is uh, affected in areas of hypertrophy, that is the septum and uh, the base, I mean, the apex. So these are the areas which are affected as so strain is reduced. So this is uh, the in systolic view, this is in systolic freezing, you can see, you don't want to see dynamic uh, full side map, you can see freeze it in the end system and see this. Now, we will go to the cardiac valves, cardiac valves, you see, uh, mitral valve acquisition, calculation of the mitral valve area, and, uh, another with regurgitation, AROA. So, mitral valve is a unique valve. Uh, which was uh, imaged by echocardiography right from the beginning of the echocardiography. So, no days. Uh, see, uh, navigation textbook of uh, echocardiography on the board illustrates a lot of uh, images on mitral valve. So, now what you have is the 3D. The advantage of 3D is that you can do use the zoom view or the zoom volume and then crop it. The advantage is that you can view from both the sides of the metal valve. What do you see in 2D when you take a cross sectional view of the metal valve is viewed from the right ventricle. But uh, in uh, 3D, you can have view from the RV side. This is view from the RV side. And you can also view from the left ventricle side. This is called as a surgical view of the metal valve. You can see here the beautiful metal valve. This is a uh, from the lateral to medial side, this is uh, a, uh, this is A1, A2, A3, and uh, this is uh, P1, P2, P3, from lateral to medial. So this is the metal valve, which you can see here, and this is the product antenna, which is attached. The attachment of the product antenna uh, and the papillary muscles, uh, all these things can be seen when you cut it from the RV side. This is from the RA side, you see the metal valve, which is more smooth, here it is coarse, you can see here more smooth, centimeter leaflet. From the, this is the lateral side, the medial side, it comes here when you go to A3, P1, P2, P3, it goes like that. So my, uh, the most important point here is the mitral uh, stenosis, uh, which I think uh, everybody is clear. Now we'll add some more light on mitral regurgitation where we have uh, problems. So mitral regurgitation, this is a definition, and then we have the, uh, Metal regurgitation, which can have in acute setting or chronic setting, this is a normal LV size and a normal LA size, hyperdynamic LV. This is a enlarged LV to see in chronic MR and enlarged LA, normal kinetic or hypokinetic LV. So these are the techniques to differentiate this and 3D echo plays a major role in this. So this is a mitral regurgitation, which you see uh, is considered to be a primary. When the mechanism of regurgitation are related to the disease of the mitral valve leaflets, chronic severe primary MR imposes a pure volume overload on the LV, resulting in eccentric hypertrophy and the LV dilatation, increased preload and combined with a low to normal afterload. So that is a problem. So in chronic MR, you can have uh, maybe due to the endocarditis, vegetation, leaflet uh, collapse, or papillary muscle rupture especially in a patient with uh, acute myocardial uh, infarction, or when you do an intervention, you can have the abrupt rupture of the papillary muscle, muscle and maybe the balloon valve aplasia. These are all uh, nightmares when you are being using the double balloon techniques. You know, these are all less when you use the inner balloon. So it's going to be more and today's related uh, techniques and opposite. So various types of uh, uh, Classification, this is the carpenter's classification based on the motion. This is a normal motion. The is mainly due to the annular dilatation in insulin heart disease. Annular deformation, which you have in dilated cardiomyopathy, perforation of leaflets in etocarditis, cluffs in leaflets in congenital pathologies. And uh, type 2 is excess motion, it's just opposite. You know, you have this mesomatous degeneration, elongation of the cardiac. Rupture of the cardiac, as it happens in fibroelastic uh, deficiencies, and the elongation of the papillary muscle in uh, Marfan syndrome. 
rupture of the papillary muscles. So these are the uh, last. This is uh, one classical example. This is the uh, from viewed from the uh, epithelial side. This is the mitral valve. This is the iota. Whenever you do 3D, always you have to rotate the IT valve and the task be flies in the 12 o'clock position so that the left atrial appendage is in the 9 o'clock position. So from here you have to uh, count. So this is the uh, anterior mitral leaflet you can see here. The, this is the A1, this is A2, A3, not clearly well marked. This is uh, P1, P2, P3, these are all clearly marked. And what you see here, this is the elongated valve. Is a P2 class. This is P2 class. So it is very difficult to understand whether it is A2 P2 or P2 alone or P2 A3 combination in from 2D. This is a 3D which clears. You simply say this is a P2 class. Very easy. So you see and talk when you do 3D. This is a type 3 restricted motion type 3A. Here most commonly is rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic mitral regurgitation, or it. Uh, Traction of the leaflets as it happens in carcinoid or thicken, or which occurs in radiotherapy, and uh, the traction of the cardi as it happens in the SLV, fusion of the cardi, and uh, calcification as it happens in uh, hyper eosinophilic syndromes. So, type 3D is restricted motion apical displacement, which is uh, happen. Uh, due to feathering of the leaflets, which happens with uh, ischemia disease and ischemia MR, can also occur in dilated. So, now in mitral regurgitation, the 3D techniques, which are very, very effective, are vena contractor. And uh, the effective regurgitant RVs area calculation is much more made easy by anatomical regurgitant RVs area. Very, very important. Very, very easy technique. This is a direct measurement of the true regurgitant RVs area. And you have the ordered advantage of 3D color, Doppler scope, volume, and other things. So, this is the me uh, measuring of the inner contractor, as you see here. So, in a biplane image, you can uh, see that. And uh, you can exactly mark where to measure to the. So, so, orthogonally opposite views can be taken and you can measure and then average it. And similarly, this anatomical regression of this area calculation is very easy. See here, this is a 2D area, you put this translation line or cutting plane over there, and then you are uh, having this display on the right hand side, it shows the uh, regression jet, and you can simply trace it. So, this is called a anatomic regression of this area. Just like your metal valve area, a planimetry, you can do this planimetry. See, you cut here in this uh, 3D image, and then you have the display in this image. It's very, very easy. So, you have multiple algorithms, which are all dependent on this uh, uh, calculation, whether it is a primary MR or secondary MR, and how difficult is the valve pathology and everything, so you can calculate it. Uh, do that. I will show you here. This is the case of a 67 year old businessman, 20 years post PCA for annual MI. And then you can see here uh, this uh, metal regurgitation is very severe. So, all of a sudden, we wanted to have a regular checkup, and metal regurgitation has increased compared to his uh, previous echocardiographic uh, views. And there was EV prime of 49. You can see here, this is the metal regurgitation. Which indicates a severe MR. See that this is the uh, calculation here. This is the vena contractor. This is the anatomic regurgitant RVs area, which is calculated, which indicates severe MR in this case. And uh, you can have simultaneous uh, calculation of the GLS, which is uh, minus 5, and RV free wall strain minus 7, ejection fraction by 3D. Uh, see, markedly reduced ejection fraction. Patient. GLS is only minus 8, GC is minus 6, and uh, GA is uh, minus 12, and GRS only plus 18, and the fuse is markedly reduced to 2. This is the LM max. This is the patient died suddenly. 
So you see that the LA strain is only seven. So that implicates the elasticity pattern. And uh, see the mitral dislocation is yes, increasing dislocation and it's one of the common causes. Now we go to the trichosmid valve. So for trichosmid valve acquisition, you will go to the RV focus typical question for you. And then uh, you can have a full volume acquisition or you can place the zoom boxes and acquire the images and then rotate it, simple rotation. So you can display the trichosmid valve from either right ATM or right ventricle. This is a right ventricle which you are familiar. Is always you have to rotate it and keep the septal leaflet in the uh, six o'clock position. It is very, very important so that the anterior leaflet is here and posterior leaflet is here. We are just opposite in uh, the view from the right atrium, where uh, on the right hand side you have the posterior leaflet and on the left hand side you have the uh, anterior leaflet. Always place the septal leaflet over the six o'clock position. So this is the a view from the right ventricular side. So you can see here, septal leaflet which is placed, and you can have the anterior leaflet and posterior leaflet. It's the posterior leaflet, this is the anterior leaflet. This is open position, whereas here, uh, this is the closed position here during the system. Then, system is you where they close. Other landmarks also are very, very important. So you can see here, when you see from the uh, nutritional side, this is the coronary sinus, and then you have the tendon of parallel. This is a triangle, of course, which you can visualize in this area. Uh, RCA uh, traverses here, anteriorly. So it's a very, very important technique. It uh, has come up in intervention. This is view from the right atrial side. You can see here, this is the posterior leaflet, this is the anterior leaflet, and this is the septal leaflet. See. One another advantage is that uh, in patients with the Epstein's anomaly, you have this. It's a patient with the Epstein's anomaly. Again, some problem. Microsoft is again left in. <laughs> So this is the uh, Epstein's anomaly. This uh, length divided by body surface area, the fraction points, the mitral annulus and the epigastric annulus. If it is more than eight millimeter per uh, meter square, it is Epstein's anomaly. The exact point of uh, attachment of the uh, certain mean plate can be seen. So this is called as a translation line of the cutting plane. As you see here, it's a cutting plane. Can be moved from the base to the apex. I or, uh, see this, it is at the uh, basal level. Cut. See this cut, and you don't see the septal leaflet here. And you can move it towards the uh, apex at the uh, attachment point. Now you see the septal leaflet. 
So identification of the exact point of uh, this can be identified very easily by the PT techniques. Now iodic valve, coming to the iodic valve, uh, mainly viewed by the multiplane view. It is zoom views are very, very important, especially uh, transient visual uh, infographic is very helpful for software calculation. These are all very important uh, during these tower days. Initial days, we were happy with the uh, 2D examination of the ID valve. But uh, now we require uh, for tower calculation, the ID valve area, exact ID valve area can be calculated when you use this LVOT di diameter. That is very, very important here. LVOT diameter by 2D doesn't uh, uh, go very well in calculation of the ID valve area. And thereby they abandon this technique. So when you want to calculate IIT valve area, you would use the 3D LVOT diameter. And the IIT analysis measurement, the sinus measurement at the sinus level, ST junction, tubular iota, all can be made very easily by this uh, 3D technique. This is a 3D technique, and the uh, exact area of uh, LVOT diameter can be measured in this. These are the softwares which are available, which uh, helps you to measure all these points, various points. And you can make the adjustments over the ID value over here. And uh, the diameter, maximal diameter, minimal diameter. So they, all these, from this, you can calculate the valve size. And similarly, the types of uh, lesions, whether it is a normal, pneumatic, calcific, or bicuspid, can be identified by this technique. And uh, when you have uh, high gradient iodic stenosis, the addition of the 3D helps you in this to identify whether it is bicuspid or tricuspid. Especially in these types of valves, you can see here it's very difficult some of the times to identify this. This can be easily identified. This is a trileaflet uh, IDR, which is very stenotic, and it is also metal minimal, mighty bulk involvement. Contrast with that is this uh, bicuspid IT valve. This is the bicuspid IT valve, which is uh, type 2. Type 1 is above downwards, type 2 side by side. And uh, you can have a uh, or without rafe. And the commonest type is this above downwards with uh, rafe. This uh, type is uh, around 59% of the cases. Now, uh, we move on to some of the difficult areas of the pulmonary valve. The pulmonary valve has uh, three lifters who are attached to the septum and are named right and left. And the other cusp is anterior and is labeled as anterior cusp. You can see here. So, to uh, cut uh, pulmonary valve, go to the pipeline view, especially in short axis. Uh, Pulmonary valve is obtained and then you can place the acquisition box or zoom box over here and click. It's very simple. Or you can go for full volume at this level. This is the acquisition box, place zoom uh, box, and then you go for that and then you rotate. This is the full volume. Uh, where uh, this, is the, this is the anterior and the other cast can be added. So this is very, very easy. The image is rotated so that the anterior leaflet is placed in the 12 o'clock position. See, 12 o'clock position. And the right and left leaflets are seen posteriorly attached to the septum. So this is how you identify the pulmonary valve. So when you are in uh, being the heart axis view, you can take a full volume at that level. And then you can do the two click crop. This technique is a newer technique. You can place one client here. And then another point here. So that's called as two click crop. So that is a so easier method. It is available with both the uh, giants, it is uh, G and the This is called as two click crop. And then this is the two click crop image of the pulmonary valve, which is here. So things are made uh, easy by these uh, methods. So I, I would uh, request you to do LV function assessment by 3D techniques. And uh, 3D techniques are uh, very, very important when you have a realistic, when you require a realistic visualization of the cardiac valves. And when you have uh, RV volume assessments, 
and the LA function assessments, especially in mitral regular situation, the LA volume size, the LA strain, all these things can be calculated very easily. And then the uh, data from 3D echocardiography can provide objective evidence of the LV systolic disc, uh, disc synchrony, especially in patients uh, for selection of uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy. Uh, the recent developments of 3D is uh, spectral tracking uh, echocardiography allows calculation of the LA ejection fraction strain and volumetric analysis and simultaneous measurement of rightly directional components of strain in a single D 3D data set. And uh, finally, you have the fusion echocardiography, which uh, allows potential in the cath lab, both in the ET lab and the intervention lab, it's used. Now we'll uh, go to some of the examples. I will close this and then open the software so that uh, we'll have some uh, uh, realistic view of some of the patient. This is the uh, patient which uh, just the window size. This is the window size adjustment I am making for the Echo pack. So this is the patient whom uh, was, uh, was referred for uh, atrial septal defect identification. Okay. You see the ECG traces in the total? Yes. Now, you can run that. See that this is the real septum which is seen here. Uh, you focus this view on this uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees plane. And uh, here you see the SVC, the coronary sinus and the IVC are seen on the other side. You see that coronary sinus and IVC are seen on the left. This is the imperial septum which there is a defect of that imperial septum defect which is seen here. And confirm it with uh, to the color. This will flow from uh, left to and left to right shunt. You can see here this is the left right shunt, which is that this patient. So you go to the biplane view. So when you are in 90 degrees, you go to biplane view. You have on the right hand side this is the z axis picture which is seen here, and then click on the 4D in that place. Zoomed images or the zoom box has been placed. So now you have to make a uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation. This is URV from the left atrial side. You can see here this arrow. This is the I over I. So you are being from this side. This is left atrium, this is right atrium. So from this side you are being, and uh, thereby this is a view from the left atrial side. You can see the atrial septal infuse V with the atrial septal. Defect. Now you have to rotate it 90 degrees clock, I mean counterclockwise. See that this is the image which is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. Rotated image. See that? Still you are viewing from the left atrial side. What you are more familiar is view from the right atrial side. So now you have to rotate it 180 degrees in the uh, x axis. The axis so that you be from the right atrial side. So, this is the SVC which is seen here and the IVC which is uh, seen here. You must understand these two are not in the same plane. See, that is uh, they are not in the 180 degrees plane. This is slightly they are angled. That's very, very important point which you have to remember. So, this is the uh, interatrial septal defect, the atrial septal defect which you are seeing. And for intervention, it's very, very important. This is the iota which is seen here. You must know whether the aortic uh, part is uh, properly there. And uh, you can see here, this is superior, this is the inferior. So very easy. You see here, you can rotate it and see the rim. The rims are seen beautifully. That is good rim, IT rim, superior rim, inferior rim. So all the rims are there. So this you can identify very easily. So now you have a good idea how to see this and these rotation techniques are there. It is just like uh, the anatomical specimen. 
the appeared image is just like anatomical specimen in your hand. You can cut it, do anything you like. I will just show some of the images of the valves so that you will be more familiar with that. So this is the metal valve, you can see here, this is the translation line. I can move the translation line. You see the translation, this line is moving, this line is moving so that the uh, unwanted areas can be cut and uh, thrown away and you can place it properly. So this is the mitral valve, which you see here, the mitral valve. From lateral to medial side, A1, A2, A3, P1, P2, P3. This is the left atrial appendage, which you see here, left atrial appendage. This is the aorta, which you see here. So that may be the aorta. So now you see that this is the uh, view of the mitral valve. So this is uh, the ID valve. You just you take the short axis, you can place the acquisition box over there in a uh, biplane view, and then simply click uh, 3D. I mean, then you have the 3D images. So in the long axis, the IoT valve can be seen in the long axis plane. See that very well. It is very easy to measure the annuity diameter, annular diameter. It's very easy in this uh, technique. This is the very easy technique, and you can go for the software analysis, which I showed you. Easily you can uh, correct these uh, borders, and you can take the measurements very easily. See that. So that is that can be done very easily in these patients. Now we'll go to the pulmonary valve, which I showed you. This is the uh, short axis cut from the pulmonary valve. And this is the cutting plane which you have. Now I will show, uh, demonstrate to you two clip crop. This is the two clip crop. This tool is activated. Now I place one clip over here and then this second clip over here. Now you have the two clip view of the pulmonary. So things are very easy when you have this uh, 3D techniques. Now I have the ITC well also I will show you. So I think uh, these are the common examples which I have shown you. Uh, uh, I will be very pleased to have uh, all your uh, doubts cleared. If you have any doubt, you can uh, place it in the chat box and then we will see that and uh, we will uh, proceed to integration. This is the tricuspid valve. See here, this is the tricuspid valve. The tricuspid valve again can be clicked. This is from the left atrial side and cutting to click top. On the right hand side, you see the two clip uh, drop view of the tricuspid valve, N phase view. So, these N phase views, this is the certain leaflet. You have to rotate this uh, to place the certain leaflet always in the six o'clock position. It's very, very important. So, this is the view from the uh, right atrial side. You can also view from the uh, left atrial side. So, again, I will tell you so this uh, two clip drop. I'm placing one point over here from the RV side. This is the second point over here. So this is the view of the tricuspid valve. The septal leaflet can be beautifully seen. This has to be rotated. This is the interventricular septum. This has to be rotated so that the uh, septal leaflet is always in the six o'clock position. So I think uh, I will stop sharing and uh, we will uh, go for the uh, interrogation session. Uh, uh,
Thank you, Dr. Amudan, to the fantastic uh, uh, overview, and you've done a great job going through it very quickly. Uh, you have nicely shown the morphological uh, value of 3D, and you've also shown how the functional element can be brought in by a 3D, adding to the strain and parametric imaging, and also for CRT. And now I think uh, there are lots of uh, questions from the audience. And let me read it out. This is from Dr. Mr. Manohar Ketkar. 3D echocardiography is not, a, not available everywhere, and cost of machine is not non-affordable. What do what to do in this scenario? You are avoiding a catalog at a cost of 4 CR, 4 crores. Why can't you buy a 3D machine? See, I I am a private practitioner. I am a retired practitioner. I purchase this 3D equipment with the uh, retirement benefits. So you cannot say that it is not available widely. It is available. You are not intending towards the 3D techniques. That's what is important. You are contented with a small 7 lakh equipment, which is a Chinese equipment. I uh, greatly condemn this uh, practice. Always you, can, you have to have a high-end machine as well as a handheld machine. This is what I would suggest. You have a handheld machine for your uh, daily day-to-day -day visits. When you go, you can carry your uh, uh, handheld machines, especially you can give it to your uh, ER resident. ER resident can do the echocardiography in his uh, ear room and can transmit over the Wi-Fi and you can do that. And uh, the next day you can trans uh, transfer the patient to a dedicated uh, 3D echo lab and do the complete patients. So it is widely available. Only the intent has to come. All the corporate have got a lot of money. They can spend um, you know, 30 to 40 lakhs. That is the basic uh, 3D equipment which you can have. High-end equipment uh, will double the cost. I think uh, they can afford See, when I am able to purchase a retired person, I am a retired person, I am able to purchase with whatever retired benefits I have, I purchase this equipment. <laughs> I don't know what is uh, <laughs> Professor Chandra's uh, opinion. I think, uh, Dr. Amudan, I, I, uh, I think you are absolutely right. What, uh, Dr. Manohar, what you should have is, even if you can't purchase it, where you are working in the hospital, because now the structural, I'm sure that you're closer to one of the hospitals where they do structural intervention like TAVI and other complex structure, and also intraoperative inter GE is being done. So I think you should ask the, um, uh, the institution to buy. The more important thing is you would find a way if you get interested and you started doing by yourself. See, the unfortunate situation is most of the time in India, it is being done by the sonographers, and here, like Dr. Alagas and Dr. Parashar and Dr. Vinak, Agarwal, Dr. Amudan, all of them, they put their hands on this transducer. I do. And we look at that, and that, so unless you develop that kind of a, uh, intensity in doing that, then automatically you'll find a way and you'll also get the system, uh, the institution to buy it. Well, anyway. I think the next question is from Dr. Muthu Kumar Rajagopalan. How does 3D strain helpful in the evaluation of cardiac function? Cabbage patient post-operatively in the ICU. So post-bypass patient, uh, does 3D strain help? Uh, there is always a septal uh, wall motion abnormalities. You know, post CABG patients have several wall motion abnormalities added to their basic uh, regional wall motion abnormality after the surgery. So post-surgery is always the septum will have all the problems and these can be identified by 3D. Uh, I showed you the LBB pattern. Uh, similar patterns can be recognized. You have to have the intent to do that. Uh, once you do it routinely, it comes. No problem. I think the other thing I would just add there is that I think Postoperatively, if you're suspecting the graft gone down or something like that, then obviously the strain does not only a 3D strain, but certainly will do if the windows are good. Otherwise, even a regular strain will show the abnormality of the corresponding segment. I think it might be helpful. But in that situation, you may even see the wall motion abnormality. 
Now, the third question, this is from Dr. Shanmo Sundar and Radha Krishna. In many of the situations, one, the 2D image quality is not very good. The reliability of 3D volumes and EF measurements are not reliable. Would you would like to get your comment on this? I think uh, uh, you are having some of the older equipment, older, uh, older day equipment. Now, the 3D probe is very small. I showed you the 3D probe. It's very small. You can uh, uh, get, a, get beautiful images. But the basic problem is you should have a good 2D uh, images. It's uh, what you have basically when the patient uh, is not having a proper image. When the 2D images are not proper, 3D images uh, naturally will not be proper. The technique is that uh, when you want to do ejection fraction, you must uh, acquire a uh, LB focused ethical four chamber view, which I was stressing. Uh, our uh, intent is always uh, the yeah, septum is placed in the center in uh, ethical four chamber view. This should not be done. For uh, doing a uh, ejection fraction calculation by 3D, you have to acquire LB focused ethical four chamber view. That is very, very important. And then you take the uh, tomographic slices first to acquire this. And then do the total uh, view tomographic slices, identify whether all the uh, segments are brought in. Uh, this can be controlled uh, by uh, breath holding. See, you are going to take uh, minimum two steps, I mean two beats. For doing an adjacent fraction calculation, two beat acquisition is sufficient. That is 12 frames per second. Unlike uh, the uh, previous days, you have to take six beats. You, a two beat acquisition is sufficient that is your 12 frames per second, and uh, breath holding need not be required. And these are the technical tricks which you must follow. The best trick is uh, two-beat acquisition, and second trick is uh, uh, the avoidance of the uh, breath holding. If you are going to say, hold your breath in expression, the patient won't understand. So there may be difficulties. I see, please, you can do this uh, two-beat uh, acquisition. I have not found any problem. And the most important thing is ECG gated. If the ECG should be proper, once you don't have a proper ECG, your uh, 3D uh, machine will not work properly. And the LV focused ethical food chamber. These are the tricks which you have to follow. I think the key key thing that you hit it on the uh, head of the nail, Dr. Ramadan, is I think most of the echocardiographers, because of the volume of the studies are so much, uh, they don't take time to put the ECG. I think for if you want to do any 3D work, it'll be ECG is a paramount importance. Then you need to have a good ECG signal in order to get it. Actually, I would even urge that you need to use that because even for your respiratory movement and looking at that, I think that good ECG signal is very important. Dr. Watson Bikar asks, why six beats and not three beats as it takes too much space in the machine? Any advantage? As we going to estimate, as we are using, estimate everything in only one beat. What do you say, Dr. Uh, this, uh, the problems of speech come when you are having more beats. Only thing is that uh, frame rate. See, when you have a single beat, the frame rate is only six frames per second. If you want to increase the frame rate, then you have to have more images. Uh, the latest uh, technology of uh, C-Sound and uh, the Toshiba technology, they tend to merge all these things with a single beat. They are having all these uh, 40 frames per second. So it's a technology has to advance. That is the main thing. As the latest equipments come in, you have 40 frames per second in a single beat. So that is possible only by the uh, latest equipment where you have to invest more. They may be more costly. The equipment may be more costly. Dr. Mayanak Mukhapatya, any advantage of disynchronous assessment by 3D echo? That's what I was telling you. See, when you are having a, a patient with heart failure with a uh, preserved ejection fraction, the GCS uh, is the last one to go down. So you have a degrees in uh, GLS, ejection fraction normal, and GCS normal. So this disparity tells you uh, that the patient has problems. That is a major uh, advancement. Second thing, your uh, calculation of the LV diastolic dysfunction, the four parameters, that is the parameters of E prime, medial or lateral, then E by E prime, 
and then the tear jet uh, velocity and the la volume so these parameters more than 50% uh, presence of these parameters will tell you that uh, the patient has a uh, heart failure with a pseudo ejection fraction so again in patients with uh, uh, who are lbb who are uh, planned for uh, crt you can select the patient with the propagation images and uh, we use in catalog this uh, innumerable with diffusion images and uh, uh, triplum uh, chennai they have the diffusion images in their lab it's possible and they do lot of work with the diffusion images uh, dr uh, sivakumar uh, did some of the uh, uh, fusion images in our conferences i echo india madurai echo india Ch mumbai also he was doing some of the cases, fusion images well, could, could, could you comment on the uh, the dyssynchrony especially one of the areas where the dyssynchrony if people are looking for is dilated cardiomyopathy where there's no other choice and you want to have a, a resynchronization. So there, I think the LV is dilated and how would you go about uh, Dr. Amazon? So any tips? How do you increase the uh, rate to that? Uh, Counterclockwise and clockwise rotation, the torsion, uh, that difference normally is uh, 7 degrees. The ethical counterclockwise rotation and the basal clockwise rotation is around 7 degrees. So when it is uh, reduced, uh, that tells you that. Another important point is the uh, LBB, uh, classical LBB pattern in uh, uh, longitudinal strain. Uh, longitudinal strain, classical LBB pattern is uh, the septal activation and other things happen at a discrete, uh, they are not uh, congruous. Whereas uh, atypical LBB button, they are uh, congruent. So the classical LBB, I mean atypical, I mean classical typical LBB button is, uh, hallmark, is one of the hallmarks for uh, identifying the patients who are suitable for CRT. That uh, there are many papers on this. Do you ever use your timing, time to peak in a 3D? 3D strain image, what you got, like about the current G, E95 and all they have, yes. you take the full volume image and do you ever use the time to peak from different segments of the wall to see whether they could use that information for looking at the site for my pacing? Yes, sir. And the, that is the point which you are having. I don't have the latest uh, E95. I'm having the E9. So okay. Uh, offline with the echo pack. Very good. So okay. Use this in this and then uh, load it in the echo pack and then in the echo pack you can do the analysis. Sure. So I think that definitely 3D has advantage over 2D in terms of identifying the synchrony, provided the images are good and the volume is pretty good. Then the next question, Dr. Muthu Kumar Rajagopalan. LB 3D strain and volume estimation by transesophageal echo during preoperative hemodynamics is it reliable? Please elaborate. There are very uh, many studies. I showed you the uh, comparative studies with the CMR. Uh, the uh, 3D derived ejection fraction exactly correlates with uh, three uh, CMR derived ejection fraction. You need not spend. Uh, uh, thousands of rupees on CMR to calculate the adjacent fraction. They uh, collaborate very easily. Whereas uh, MO techniques never correlate. See, never uh, uh, MO do you have 75, 80 adjacent fraction. And some of the physicians or surgeons, uh, they call back. The adjacent fraction uh, that doctor has reported is 75. You are giving it as uh, 56. What is this uh, doctor? So the correct ejection fraction, ejection uh, calculation is possible with uh, 3D technique. Uh, the American Society of uh, Echocardiography has uh, contraindicated using MO techniques for calculation of ejection fraction. They totally have abandoned that. And what they recommend is in patients uh, in places or uh, centers where they don't have 3D echo, you can go by the 2D Simpson technique. So when you want to pre do the preoperative assessment, Necessarily use 3D technique. And if you don't have a 3D echocardiography machine, you can have the Simpson technique, 
which is available with all the equipments, 2D equipments. Don't use the MO technique or the eyeball technique. Dr. Annie Joji Anthony, in the presence of an LV thrombus or an LV aneurysm, it is difficult to assess the EF measurements by 3D method. Kindly give your value or opinion. One of the advantages of 3D is uh, uh, calculation of uh, ejection fraction in patients with the LV aneurysm. I was explaining that. Uh, in 2D techniques, it will be very difficult to uh, just in all the three planes where the adjustments can be done in a 3D. Only problem is that the apex, uh, when there is, a, is going to bulge like that, you may have problems. You have to go for void angle selection and your equipment should support that. So that is the uh, problem there. Otherwise, that is not problematic. You can increase the width of the uh, area of uh, scan. Then go for 3D. Or you, or you can do a focused, the so same apex you want to look at it if the, if the area is bigger than your transfer, the near field can accommodate. Then you can go to the apical short axis and use the wider area to accomplish, accomplish the same task. But you may not get the entire full volume, but you'll be able to get the morphological and the characteristic what you see. But if you want to look for the EF, probably you may not be able to. Mr. Sandeep Patil, even though 3D is helpful in the accurate diagnosis of many heart disease, traditional 2D echocardiography will be always the first choice for every echocardiographer. Both the modalities have their own specific techniques and limitations. I think probably you agree with that. Yes, sir. You start your examination with the 2D, go for color, go for a Doppler examination, then go for 3D. This is what I do in every patient. That is the thing, the need of the hour. So you have uh, good images, 3D images, as well as 2D images. Whichever you want to do, you can use. So extension of the 2D technique, that's what I am emphasizing. That's all. It is not a very uh, new technique or anything. This uh, 3D has been there for more than three or four decades. And now uh, has advanced to this uh, level. I only think we got to invest that. We got to invest initially for that. Invest their time, invest their time in learning to learn the machine basically. Miss Chandrakala Pendi, Pendi, sir, which machines are good for 3D echo, GE or Philips? In Philips, we need to acquire full volume with multiple beats, and in GE, with single beat is enough to get all the views. So they're making a statement. Also. What do you think, uh, Dr. Amazon? Sir, I started my 3D examination with the Philips. So I learned it in the hard way. Now I have the facility of GE, and it's very easy to do that. Now TomTech is acquired by Philips. They are all, they also updated their uh, 3D techniques. That is the uh, hot model, which uses artificial intelligence. They are also uh, coming up with the bright ideas. But uh, when you are going for advanced packages, you will have to pay more for that package. So it is package different. You, it's all depend on your. Uh, uh, money power. I think uh, I think it's fair to say um, in the market currently, both machines provide 3D at the level where we have not even many people have not even started using it to the full potential. So I think the current machines are pretty good to do what we want to do. And the question is, well, Madam uh, you I want to get your thought here. See, the, the, the one point is. When would you do a full volume imaging or when would you do a real time imaging? Real time 3D, which makes it easier for you to look at the structure and go on, and full volume will allow you to gather for a quantitative type of this thing. When would you choose one or the other? It all depends on the patient's system. What do you do in a routine a pre operative assessment? I do all 2D, uh, color, Doppler. And then I go for uh, 3D views, that is a one single frame uh, acquisition and one double frame acquisition for the uh, volume calculation, ejection fraction calculation, and one six frame acquisition for uh, strain calculation and sophisticated views. This is routine. 
But when you do a transition with the radiography for patients with mitral regurgitation or patients with the mitral stenosis, or when you want to do assessment for a tag or the IT valve, so in that area you will have to go for the zoom reviews, the uh, live views, zoom reviews, and the live 3D and other things coming. You start examination of the 3D in biplane, then go step by step. So that is the routine. Always do examination in biplane, whether uh, see a biplane or a triplane. It has also has an uh, added advantage. In patients with atrial fibrillation, you cannot do strain calculation. It may be very difficult with the 2D strain. So you, when you have a triplane view, you can uh, do the uh, calculation very easily. Now, a single bit view acquisition, you do in all the three planes. So triplane acquisition is a must. So when you do the acquisition, I do routinely in these patients like this. But when the patient has a mitral regurgitation, then you go for that live view of that uh, uh, mitral valve or zoom view, and then you have the frame rate which is very good, and then the image uh, software also works in that condition. So you have to choose whether you want to apply the software, the uh, quantifications at mitral valve quantification or uh, ID valve quantification or RV kind of quantification. So, so you have to decide based on the requirements in a particular patient. Dr. Vinod Vijayan, do you use global radius chain, circumferential chain routinely? Is it available in uh, CDX Philips, also 3D GLS? That's what I, uh, I told you, that uh, all the three patients have, that is the uh, G, uh, uh, Philips after acquisition of uh, Tomcat and Toshiba. So the latest machines, they have these strain values. The older machines may not be having all those things. In uh, India, as far as I know, G has this. And when you are uh, going to purchase a Philips machine, you have to specifically ask them whether they have this software package of uh, Tomcat. So they will add to your costs. Well, Dr. Madhu Babu is asking, sir, how can we differentiate between endocarditis on 3D? Well, this is a very important question because, see, when we look at the valve structure, I think I'm Dr. Amazon, I want you to comment, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm asking, I'm rephrasing the question because when we look at the structure, the thickness, we all we have been brought up with the 2D and then 3D that thickness of the abnormal echo, what we see, two to three millimeters or one millimeter for sensitivity and specificity, or is it a vegetation? So the thickness becomes important. And now in 3D, uh, the vendors give an image, and that image thickness can be optimum, can be changed quite a bit by changing the compress or changing the gain, and still you can get a good visually pleasing picture. Then where do you draw the line to identify what is the real thickness. You have to optimize the image first itself, sir. Before uh, viewing that, you have to optimize the image. Quality quality of the image has to be optimized before measuring the thickness of the valve or uh, uh, the quality of the or uh, something like that. I think I agree, but I think I would also want, uh, in a, I mean, if it is a real gross abnormality, like a Play leaflet or vegetation popping in and out, it, it doesn't require any existing, any um, um, uh, fine tuning. Otherwise, you'd be able to see it. Uh, the 3D does add in terms of basically looking at the adjoining structures, um, uh, whether it's an in, in, uh, involvement or erosion or where it's going, it, it'll be able to tell you. But the size of the thickness itself is probably you have to use your. Uh, 2D plus the 3D and the 3D other, the one of the advantages of 3D as Dr. Amudan was nicely pointing out is simultaneous biplane on the same beat. And with some of the other images, you can also get triplane and you have a way of moving that plane in any different direction, either elevation plane or lateral plane, and you can get a better identification of the structure, what you're seeing, and whether it becomes part of the leaflet or, or is it an additional structure which is not part of it. So those things will allow you to make the diagnosis whether it is uh, vegetation or not. And certainly it does add, um, uh, there's no question about it. I think 
I mean, even a two days ago, I had a patient where uh, presented with my endocarditis, and everybody thought the patient has got endocarditis, but at the same time, also, he also had a flail mitral valve, papillary muscle rupture, side by side, closer, closer to one another. So, on cross view, which you cannot get, I mean, you can get, uh, my, with, if you have a go a transgastric view and pull it up, you can get it. But most of the time, it is very easy to get an first view of the tricuspid valve and mitral valve, which are very difficult um, with the regular TE. And it, it gives you a better information about the, the structural morphological details. And that does, stuff, does, does definitely aid in the diagnosis, increasing the confidence. In any, what, do you, what do you think, Dr. Amazon? Yes, sir. Uh, definitely, the 3D will add to the uh, images. And uh, especially in mitral valve or IT valve vegetation, uh, you can do the 3D T, and uh, that adds uh, enormously. The image quality is so beautiful; you can identify very easily. Even in a small vegetation, you can identify in 3D uh, T. Doctor Vinod uh, uh, Vijayan, any updates on high flow Doppler, which could replace sonicated contrast? <laughs> that is out of uh, topic for today's discussion, sir. <laughs> I think, I think we, 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 we will leave it. I think I would suggest that uh, it, I don't think it's going to replace. I think it, it may add. Nothing that comes up replaces. Still, even though Dr. Amudan is mentioning, go to the 90% of the labs. And Dr. Parashar also nicely alluded to it in the in the previous uh, previous or one or two conferences before. Till we do them more, everybody because it's been the brainwashed in such a manner that every so the sonographer who starts out with the M mode from parasitic long axis view goes on and this and that. So <laughs> nothing is going to be placed, but it may add. But I think what you have guys have to do is you have to get actively involved with your sonographers and in their lab hands-on doing, then the things might change. Dr. Bhavasan, because I'm doing 2D and 3D strain regularly, always 3D strain is lesser than 2D. Any guidelines? Uh, what, what is that point, sir? The last uh, question? It, it says that uh, 2D strain is always lesser than, I mean, 3D strain is always lesser than the 2D strain, I believe. It does. Uh, focus in the uh, meta-analysis which has been published. Uh, 3D strain is slightly lesser than the uh, 2D strain. This is uh, partially due to the uh, point where we record. The end history in uh, 3D strain is minimal volume, whereas the end history in uh, 2D is your closure of the IT band. So that is very important. So that may lead to some differences. Slightly less, and this has been well documented in uh, multiple... Uh, uh, multi-center studies and uh, analysis also. Dr. Sanjeevani Inamdar, RV function evaluation would 3D will replace the conventional method? Conventional method, uh, RV function, uh, many of the centers only do TAPSI. Many of the centers do TAPSI and they are very happy. And some of the centers take uh, the LB function analysis, Simpson analysis to the right side and they invert it and do that. These things are not reliable. So you have to go for 3D, which is an accurate technique. Otherwise, uh, with, with the 3D only you can uh, include the RB outflow. Otherwise, you include only inflow and the uh, body of the RB. So always it is important that you include the RB OT. If you want to include RB OT, you have to do only 3D. I, I don't know whether it will replace, but certainly people are getting better, better at it. They are realizing the value of RV, as Dr. Vinay Agarwal presented, the value of TS tricuspid valve, and as part of that, RV also becomes very important. So when they realize the value of RV, then probably assessing the RV function will also improve. Right now, using TAPSI alone is not in, enough. And I think a fair, fair amount of people are now using fractional area change now, the 3D will add more to that, and I think probably once when the, the RV is being given more important, as well as tricuspid valve is being more important, RV function is going to come. 
already we know from Dr. Allegation talk and uh, that uh, RV function in pulmonary hypertension and patient with heart failure, it becomes very, very important. So in there, you can't just use one measurement like a TAPSI, which can tell you basal lateral wall of the RV may be contracting very well, whereas the rest of the segment may not. So 3D will definitely add there. Dr. Vinod Vijayan, I had meant high definition blood flow imaging as a replacement for sonicated. I think, I think, see, the, the high definition blood flow imaging, nobody is using it routinely. I, I, I know people are using it in a different level in order to look at the myocardial perfusion. And in fact, Tom Porter from, uh, from uh, uh, University of Nebraska. But I think still, sonicated is a goal right now if you want to look for perfusion. And if you're looking for endocardial definition, I think the current system, what we have uh, with, the, with the harmonic imaging, that is as good if you can you know, optimize the images to a different level. Any comments, Dr. Amazon? <laughs> Sir, you are the authority in this side for imaging. No, no, I'm not authority. I'm one, I'm one of the learners here. Uh, Mr. Manohar Ketkar, sir, can you guide us for a place for a 3D echocardiographic training in India? Dr. Ketkar, Manohar, Manohar. Well, I think, uh, Dr. Amudan, I want you to start. <laughs> uh, sir, we are not having, sir. I am a small center. I do only private practice. Uh, in, uh, during Echo India, we have these sessions on 3D. So, dedicated sessions can be there. So if you request uh, during Echo India to you have to attend the pre-conference uh, workshops that uh, we have the 3D dedicated 3D sessions and we can do a lot. I think I think they have done in the in the past in the IAE meeting. Dr. Parashar has I think they, they were, we have, we have uh, had sessions, but I think probably this is one of the commitment from the. I mean I have had a lot of talks with the three uh, with the both the vendors. GE and Philips, and I think the key is they are all good in in marketing the products, but they are not. Uh, this is very very needy one. Probably what you are asking is the important one. I think the IAE through through IAE platform, IAE where the GE and Philips can provide uh, hands-on teaching sessions at a different level. Um, because you, you see what Dr. Amazon has achieved, what Dr. Other People allegation has achieved, what other people have achieved, is over a period of 40, 50, 30, 40 years. So, but you can get a first thing, what I would suggest is just start using biplane imaging. Then you routinely you feel familiar. Once you start familiar with that, then use real time 3D. Then you get used to it. Then you go for volumetric one by one. And Certainly, both the vendors are very, very eager. If you are doing it, they would be happy to send their application specialist, be with you for an entire day, teach you what to do, what not to do. I think they do provide that kind of service. But on the other hand, guided one, what to do, what not to do. I think IAE can, will play a significant role in this. And I think if there is sufficient... Uh, where uh, I am on uh, Dr. Sivakumar, uh, Madras Medical Mission, that is also part of that. And Dr. Rahul Malhotra, who is the Secretary of uh, Indian Academy of Echocardiography. So we uh, three formed the members of the uh, IE Council on 3D. This has been formed recently by Dr. Parashar. And uh, we will be doing the uh, regular webinars on 3D. Uh, so uh, one of the three can do that. Uh, Dr. Sivakumar does a lot of uh, 3D, uh, mainly in uh, congenital heart disease. And Dr. Rahul Malhotra similarly does a lot of 3D images. I think uh, there are no more questions. And if there are no more questions and no more uh, comments from either Dr. Parashar, allegation, or any of the senior members of the uh, IAE, I think uh, Dr. Amazon, I'd like to thank you for uh, delivering a very my interesting, thought-provoking lecture on 3D, how to use it, and the tips what you have shown. 
and hopefully it has created interest in the people to at least turn on the 3D button of the machine to start looking at what 3D is. I think the key is, I mean, I know that all of you are very busy and I also know that all of you, the labs are quite busy that you do 30, 40, or some, some of the labs even do 100. It is very difficult, but you do have to take some time to learn something about the machine if you want to get interested in a particular field. Otherwise, we can't. We can't just be going about with a very a superficial knowledge about everything. And it becomes difficult to learn a technique where you have to put your effort, hands on, and hand eye coordination, and knowing what the machine does, what the knob does, and so many of those things. So I think it will be, it'll be inter important for all of you that at least start doing uh, one case, one interesting case, bring them on a, on a time when you're free enough to do half an hour, spend time on this kind of thing, then you'll you'll be able to achieve the things what we have achieved. Thank you, Dr. Amazon. I if there's no further question, we will end the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your kind comments and your masterly present uh, from Maya Clinic to Chennai. Thank you, sir.